get my lands all ready for the season and I've got this 299 or 300 single, you should call it 299, and I'm rebuilding the carburetor on it. Don't let these tilts and carburetors scare you. Uh, a lot of people don't like them, they want to switch to Makunis, but you don't need to. These are great carbs if you just rebuild them the proper way. And if you rebuild them the proper way, I get five years out of them without really having to do anything. And most of the guys just don't do it right. Even if you bring it to a shop, they don't know how to do it. And they skip little things like this. You know, I've torn off all the, all the diaphragms and all that. Most guys don't replace these Welch plugs. It's not really replacing these Welch plugs that's important. It's what's underneath it. I'm gonna show you. Just gently boring a little bit of a hole in here and not driving this bit through it. Don't want to damage anything in there. No pressure. No pressure, man. Right there. I'll take a look in here. Focus. Well, that's what's under there. Get that welch plug out of there. Get that little piece of filing out of there. You see that little, there's a little ball valve in there, a little check valve. There you go. Now you can see it. That thing. That is the one that really wreaks havoc on this whole thing. We'll pop out the other one too, because the other one is just a whole bunch of passages that allow fuel through it. Should be wearing goggles when you're doing this, boys. I'm safety squinting. Feel it. There we go. Some of these Welch plugs are steel. I like the uh, aluminum ones. They work way better. You can see what happens. Take a look at that. So that's just a big giant opening in there. We'll try to zoom in on that. There you go. See those little holes? Uh, you know, you get some varnish in there and things sort of plug up and that sort of screws things up. But this little check valve, extremely important that you get that thing out of there. You can soak it because it gets all varnished up and then it seizes. Where's the thing? Yeah. There's, a, there's a little jiggle in there? Okay. Maybe you hit it better. Okay. So this is a brand new check valve, one-way valve, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, there you go. There's a little ball in there. That thing gets sort of gummed up. Gas is going to bog all over the place or it's not going to do anything. And as the air passes through this little venturi here, it lifts the ball, the ball up and allows more fuel passage. I don't even know how it all works. <laughs> but it does. So the important thing is to use a high quality kit, which you can't really get. Those ball valves, we can get them for you. Um, but you just can't buy those anywhere. Uh, and the kit itself, there are a lot of junky kits that come out, I don't even know where, that the diaphragms don't fit, the plugs are junk, the needles are junk, the needle and seat are junk. This is what happens. Take a look at this. I mean, that's one year. It's that, look at the, look at the color of that. It's just garbage. The needle was just stuck in there, solid. That's no good. High quality kits come with that. Check that out. That's stainless. Stainless. Gotta love that. Needle doesn't have a tendency to sit in there. Now, if you do have uh, one of these and you wanna go on the cheap and not really go out and buy all kinds of new stuff, you can soak this in some carb cleaner, uh, the good stuff. Carbon combustion ch uh, chamber cleaner. Something like this, it's, a, it do, it's not like a brake cleaner, it's not like a can of your normal carb cleaner that sort of evaporates really quickly. You just put them in a bowl, soak them, it'll take all that crud off of there. And then uh, you just take a Q-tip, put it in your drill, put some Brasso on it, shine the inside of that really well, just run it back and forth in there until that thing is just a glowing. And then, you know, that little needle won't sit in there. But just about every spring, that needle will stick inside that, guaranteed. Take a look at this bad boy. Oh, she's a dirty old thing. I'm just gonna give her a quick little spray with the air. Now this one's not too bad because I had it last year. I was running it early in the season and the, uh, the coil 
wire broke inside the motor. So, cause it has an internal coil on it. And that sort of put me out of the season. So this only had a little bit of running on it. That's it. Should be wearing safety glasses, boys. Wear your safety glasses and you don't do what I do. Not all the time. This has high speed and low speed. Some of the newer lands have a, a low speed with a, just a high, or a, a main jet, if you will. So there, that's all we're gonna do with this baby. But I've got my nice new shiny, I call it a ball valve. It's a check valve, whatever it is. Plug that in there. A lot of times you can tell it's not doing what it's supposed to do. When you pick up the carburetor and you give it a shake, make sure that you know you hold on to all the little jiggly parts. If you do that and you don't hear that ball shaking, that's when you're gonna, it, it's not gonna run right. You can rebuild everything around that, replace all the little needle and seat and the diaphragms, it's still not gonna work if that little ball valve, that little check valve's not fixed. I have hundreds, if not zillions, of carburetor parts for these Tilsons. So you just sort of punch that down there a little bit. And then, it's got a drift. Actually, this is a, uh, a puller for a clutch. But it's got a nice flat end on it. And it's nice and wide. And it goes over top of that Welch plug. That's it. That seals it. You know, I'm not driving the heck out of it, pounding it right through the thing. It's just a light little tap. There's the next one. It's in place. Some guys put a little bit of Loctite around them just to make sure they're sealed. I don't need, I've never done that. Or maybe I have, but I think I did and then I found out I didn't need to. There's that one. All right. You feel me? Little gasket, there's a little uh, copper washer that goes in underneath the seat. That's your seat. Goes there. A lot of guys, guilty. I'm one of those, I'm a guy, and I'm one of those guys. I've done it. Um, tried to go in and use different needles with a seat that's sitting in there. And a lot of kits have different sized needles, so it's not gonna work. They kinda wanna buy a kit that's kinda already and good to go. I like these types of, that's your little lever, right? I like the kind that does grab onto the needle. It was a kind of a cool little invention that I dig. And there's also this here, that little spring. That's a hen's tooth. It's as rare as a hen's tooth. Very hard to find the proper springs for these. That's the pop off or the blow off, pop off spring. That goes underneath that lever. If you just use any kind of spring, a lot of kits come with a blue and a yellow and an orange and a, they all have different tensions, different pounds that they sort of, that they uh, actuate and pull that needle up with. Uh, it's the diaphragm that actually causes that to happen, the fuel diaphragm, the fuel pump. If you use the wrong size one, you're not gonna get the right fueling and it's just not gonna work. So you gotta make sure that you use what you're supposed to. And they're hard to get, hard to get those little, uh, where are we, I need a new little rod. It's hard to get those uh, proper parts. Is there a new one in here? No, there's not. Okay. I just want to go and look at my bag of tricks, see if I got any of them. See? Well, that hinge pin is pretty dirty. It's quite corroded. I'm going to see if I can find a new one in my box. If it's corroded, maybe the little lever's not going to move the way it should. You guys, if you like my videos, make sure you subscribe, please. The subscription numbers help me a lot. Make sure that you get updates of the cool videos that we're putting out, like working on this little old land. We're gonna be wrapping these lands. I got three of them. I've got one with a 335, one with a 299, and one with the 250. So we're gonna do some ripping this winter. You've seen my videos, it's fun. But subscribe, hit the big old thumbs up. We're good to go. Now look it. You can see that that needle or that lever little arm on it is depressed underneath that space. Do you see that, Simon? Yep. Okay. So when the diaphragm pushes, it pushes down on it. But it's got to be level. 
do one of those. That's it. Make sure it moves freely. That's the heartbeat. That's the heartbeat of North America right there. All right. One of those. So that's all that needs to be done inside there. I've got my old fuel pump and all these little diaphragm and gaskets in here. And I, when I took it off, I left it all in the order that it was supposed to be. Don't just start ripping this thing apart and then trying to figure out how to put it all back together. Just leave it together and then disassemble, and put it together the way you should in the proper order. It goes like that. There are little guide pins on here or clocking pins or whatever you want to call it. So they go there. That's your diaphragm. That little nub on that is what pushes that little lever, actuates it. That's what that new fuel does, boys. Look at that. That's what the new fuel does. And I run high testing all these machines. Brutal. One of these. To go like this, isn't it? Like that. Now you go through a lot of work putting all these things together. You want to make sure you do it the right first time, right? This is kind of a loosey goosey. This you know, carb should have been soaked, but I usually use this my ultrasonic cleaner, but it's broken. But this one's not that bad. So this is what we're going with. Like I said, I was already into this last year for a ride. Then she blew it up good. All right. There we go. Before I go any further, I'll pop in my screws. These are kind of just snug. I don't go crazy on tightening these. And I always replace the fuel filter as well. You're in there, you're doing everything. These are, I think a couple of bucks, they're cheap, cheap. Spin on type. Not too crazy, bam. Just about good to go. Now, some of these needles um, have the little T-bar run across them. They've got a little slot for your screwdriver. And some don't have the T that. I like the one with the T because it's easy to grab when the machine's shaking and trying to fix it. So that's why I kind of like that. Uh, so I'm going to leave that one on it. And you know what? The end of this is not bad. This thing was just last year. I know I, I'm the first one always. People call me all the time or text me, email me uh, through a, all the different various forms of media that we deal with. Um, how do I fix the carb? I did it, it's not running right. Because you didn't do it right the first time. You gotta clean all that stuff out, you gotta do it all right. And then it's fun, it's all fun after that. Otherwise, you waste a whole season, especially us flatliner guys, who are always running with these really short seasons. And uh, it's horrible. And then it's like, I hate these sleds. I'm never gonna do this again. And I feel your pain. And you can find details of where these are supposed to be set at online. Just Google search it. You know, this is a model HR74A. Well, if you look online, Google that carb. So it's an HR74A. If you go online, you can find where uh, the model it was used for. A lot of guys try to fix these things and they use the wrong carburetors. These are all different. Passages are different, fuel ratios, whatever, all different. Gotta make sure you use the right carb and set up the carb right. This is just an initial setting. The high speed on this 299, I think is one, one turn out. There's that. Now this low speed jetting, or low speed jet, I am actually going to um, replace the needle. I think it was one as well. One is one, one is a, one and a quarter. Or, I'll look it up. Pull and pull and pull and it won't work. One. Those are my tips and tricks to get the old tilts and carburetor working. Hope it works for you.
You guys, uh, don't forget to check out my website, www.powermods.com. You can order all this stuff right through us, right to your door, a few days.